Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here and I am back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Um, today I'm using a couple of different stamp sets that are from um, the newer release, the Chin Up Buttercup stamp set, and um, then I use the Scallop card frames as well. Um, the Chin Up Buttercup, I also use the dies that coordinate with it. I thought I was going to use some other things. I had a whole different card idea for when I first went into this, the little bitty patterns, um, but that is not what ended up happening here. So I did, I cut out the largest um, card frame, the scallop card frame, and you can see I ripped my paper a little bit, but I was already planning on covering it up, so I'm not even sweating it. We're just moving on to the next step. The next step is stamping out these flowers, and I'm going to extend the stems of these flowers um, so that I can make them as tall as I need them to be. That's why you see me leaving all the white area at the bottom and stamping the leaves at the top. Um, I'm, that is intentional. So I'm stamping an intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp uh, because I, I'm going to be doing some coloring with Copic markers. Um, so I'm just going to stamp these down. I love the Misty for this. We're just stamping everything all at one time. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but any stamp positioner um, that you get will most likely do the same thing. I just have a preference for the Misty. That's just me. Um, so I went ahead, like I said, stamped all of these down, and then we're going to get right into the Copic coloring. So they're buttercups. Here we are with the yellow. Um, I'm not one of those people who's always married to making sure that the flowers are the same color as what they come in in nature. Um, but I already had the idea for a blue background for this, and yellow complements that nicely, so there wasn't any reason for me to color them a different color. But in the future, I probably totally will. I won't color them like buttercups at all. When they were drawn, you can see some of the petals have indentations. I decided that I was going to accent those, and in some cases, even kind of make my own, to give the flower a little bit more shape and definition. So... When you're shading something, um, you want to make sure that you're looking for any areas where one object lays on another. So anytime you see another, another petal tucked behind uh, one that's on top of it, there's going to be shadows there. There's typically usually shadows at the base where it meets the center of the flowers. And then like I said, you can see me adding very little flicks of color. It doesn't take a lot of color to create a lot of dimension. Um, and I'm not adding the um, darkest colors to all of the um, like outside wrinkles that I'm adding in. Uh, the, what is that, the YR24, I added to four of them. I think I only added the darkest color, the E99, to three of them. Um, and that can just give you some variation. Doing what I normally do, working from lightest out to darkest, darkest back into lightest. And as I work back out from the darkest to lightest, I am extending that color a little bit more each time to fill up the whole um, flower, the each petal as we go. Um, this color combination works for me. I like a more golden yellow, uh, but you certainly don't have to um, follow this particular combination. Sometimes I think it's scary to see a brown in there, that E99, um, but in order to get a gold look that has any kind of dimension, uh, you kind of need it. So for the lightest color, I'm just very quickly um, using the tip of the marker to kind of swipe over. I'm not blanket filling it in like I am here with the center. And then just to differentiate the center from the rest of the flower, I am going to bring in a YG03 and add a little bit of green in there. Um, so that way the center is set apart from the rest of it. For these other two flowers, I'm just very quickly going to show you where I would add the shading when I color it. I just wanted to give you an idea. I know sometimes it can be difficult to see where the shading would go. And this is only if you're doing the coloring as if your light source is in the top right hand corner. So I went ahead and colored those, and then we're going to move on to the leaves. The same premise is going to apply for the leaves. The, the leaves of buttercups are a little more ragged or torn, and so there's lots of opportunity um, to add in those little bits of color and get some real dimension out of your leaf. Um, so anyway, story time. Um, I... <laughs> I had been telling you guys about the trip that I took with my girlfriends, and um, 
this particular card I did actually before I left, which is why you can see I have different nail polish on. I still currently have the dip nails on. Um, I will be doing a video on that um, on my channel. You guys seemed very interested in seeing that and then how I, you know, manage whatever is left over after it's done. Lord help us. Um, but so one of the things that happened... Um, Basically, what we did was we flew down, we hung out, and then we rented a house. Um, so the first night, I wanted to see my, I call her my Florida mom. Um, <laughs> that's that's Dawn's mom, and I hadn't seen her in two years. And so I wanted to see her, and so that's why I went down on Friday. Saturday, we we started running a house, and then we stayed there the rest of the, the time. So the first night that we went, um, that we went down there, and there was four of us. And, um, so we went down there and we get the keys. The house is beautiful. It's got its own pool. Like, so excited to just be somewhere that I can sleep if I want to sleep or pool if I want to pool and I don't have to be responsible for anything or anyone, um, but myself. Um, so then we went to the grocery store. Now, I don't know if you have ever done a girl's weekend or something of the like, um, Holy grocery shopping, Batman. Uh, here I'm outlining, all, so the coloring's done, and I'm outlining all of these um, using a Copic Safe pen. Uh, I just like a bold black outline, but in this particular case, we're also going to eventually use it to extend the stems, which, uh, though my stories apparently are very interesting, is actually the point of this video. Um, white gel pen, little dots, highlight those stamens, set them apart, give us some dimension. That's that. Before I get back into the story, I need to make sure of what I'm doing. I'm going to stamp the sentiment, and then I'm going to use the coordinating die. By the way, I love this font. This buttercup font is adorable. I This says chin up buttercup, but in regular life, I usually say buckle up buttercup, um, which just means like whatever it is, you need to you need to get ready. You need to prepare yourself. Um, but anyway, so we, we went to, where did we go? I think we went to Publix. And um, if you have ever seen hungry women just unleashed on a grocery store, I mean, we started off with like, we'll just need, you know, some bread and peanut butter and it'll be fine. We ended up with, no joke, just an absolute cart full of things. Um, stand by, card instruction. Um, so here you can see that I have the dies in place and I wanted to show you how I'm going to, I'm gonna lay it just like this so that the edge is not covered by my cutting plate. And that way, when I run it through, there won't be any pressure on the edge of that stem. And then I'm going to, you know, pop them out of the dies. And you can see that they're all still connected. From there, I'm going to take that same pen. Now, I like to start with a smaller... Don't mind my head. I'm sorry. I had to see what I was doing. Um, I'm starting with a smaller nib on my pen. So that way, I can adjust the thickness to match up with the, the stamp that's already there. This one on the right is curved. I'm going to have to freehand it instead of using a ruler. It's not terribly difficult. And like I said, if you start with the smaller nib, you can um, make adjustments to make sure that it lines up. With that last one on the right, you can see it got thicker at the bottom. I wish that I would have drawn it differently. I didn't. Decisions were made. Um, but I, I would have wished that I would have kept it thinner. And then I'm just going to use my scissors to um, cut these out, keeping that white uh, border intact so that it looks like it is still part of the same die cut. And I'm just going to cut all of these out. So anyway, back to this grocery store. So we're basically running all over the place like chickens with our heads cut off because you know we were like down the bread aisle and then we'd be like, we need cheese, we need... yeah prosciutto we need fresh fruit we need and like the whole time my girlfriend dawn is like what you, like guys what are what are you doing like we're not gonna eat all this food we're not gonna eat all this food um and then this is the best thing ever so this woman i love other i mean i just love women um that empower women but she she was fantastic um anyway so we're like we just this cart is just overflowing with like potato chips and chip dip um like we've got fruit for when we're feeling like healthy and then we've got like 2 a.m just got home from the bar snacks like um and so we're pushing the cart through she comes through she's an older woman she's probably i don't know 
in her 60s. So this is the original background that I originally came up with, like those, those bitty patterns I was telling you about. I didn't love it. It was too busy. So instead, I opted to do just a very um, simple Distress Oxide background. This is Broken China. I'm just going to add shading from the bottom right-hand side and let it fade up. And then I'm going to flick on Clean Clear Water. I'm still working on Nina, so not a lot of water because this is not watercolor paper. And then I'm also going to use Perfect Pearls, but this time I'm going to use the gold. Um, I just thought that it would offset the, the buttercups uh, nicely. So anyway, this woman, I don't know, she's maybe in her 60s or 70s. She's got on shorts and like galoshes. Um, now, mind you, we were in Florida. It was like 95 outside. I'm sure her feet were just sweating to death. Just they were must have been dying. So galoshes, shorts on, um, and then like a very loose fitted top. Um, her hair's wild, like how exactly how I look when I go to Dunkin' Donuts, um, late at night and um she looks at us and she goes must be a girl's weekend <laughs> like how did she know like did she just take one look at the cart and be like mm, yeah you guys aren't going anywhere for a long time so even though dawn was giving us a hard time about all of the things that we were purchasing we she is correct we did not eat everything but we did eat quite a bit um of it i was super happy at lunchtime every day to be able to like make a sandwich and eat grapes and cheese sticks. Um, I was also super happy when we came uh, back from going out to be able to eat some Doritos and uh, French onion chip dip, which is delicious by the way. If you've never done that, try it. You won't be sad at it. So the background was cut slightly um, smaller than the actual scallop frame. And then I just glued that in place. I'm getting my placement together for these flowers. This buttercup, uh, the um, script buttercup, is pretty large. Um, it does fit on a uh, A2 size card, either vertical or horizontal. Um, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't overhanging too much of that scallop. So once I got everything in place, you can see my phone's off to the left-hand side there. I actually took a picture of where I wanted the... Um, flowers to be so that I could refer to it um, and then to get some dimension um, and not have to worry about all the little finicky bits you guys know that I don't like. Um, I popped up the actual like the bloom and then I glued down the stems. The, the leaves were just glued down flat. I put um, the Time of Mono Multi Glue on the back of them and then just tucked them behind where I wanted them to go. Um, and then after, when I put this one down, um, this, the curved one, uh, the bottom of the stem was overhanging um, just a little bit, just a teeny tiny little, uh, little bit. And I also didn't push it down completely all the way because I had to get this leaf back there behind it. Um, once that was good, then I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to trim off uh, that little bit of the stem, just that little teeny tiny bit. I'm going to put the uh, buttercup on as well, also with um, foam tape, because I love, I make simpler cards, I make more clean and simple designs, and I do love a one layer card, but there's something about adding a little bit of um, raised dimension in your card design that can really take something that um, is relatively simple and kind of bump it up a notch. So anyway, our grocery store venture um, was fantastic. I'm not mad at all about any of the things that we bought or any of the things that I ate. Like a last minute addition was like some apple fritter things from the bakery because you can walk through the grocery store bakery without grabbing something, right? So Melissa grabbed those and I think I ate, I don't know, I think I ate like three of them, honestly, but it's a vacation and so like I'm not going to be sad about it. I also learned that I really like those drinks mixatives, like those little teeny tiny drinks mixatives. They're delicious that you just pour in a bottle of water. Yeah, do those as well. So anyway, that is the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video, which will be sooner than you think. Bye.